audio testing. Can you hear me on Zoom? We can hear you, Ben. No, 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 I think I'm good, but uh, are you able to hear me on Zoom? I can hear you, Ben. Uh, we'll give everyone another minute to settle down before we start the ceremony. Good evening, everyone. Um, I haven't met everyone yet. My name is Ben. I'm a current third year pharmacy student and Alpha Theta chapter president. Thank you, Rokai members. Thank you, School of Pharmacy faculty and family members for taking time out of your day to join us today. On behalf of Rokai Alpha Theta chapter executive board, I welcome you to our 2022 induction ceremony. We are here tonight, first and foremost, to congratulate our inductees' um, scholastic achievements. That doesn't work, so I'll use the mouse. For tonight's program, uh, we are fortunate to have Dean Altieri here to kick off our ceremony. And next, we'll have our faculty advisor and Broke High National Board member, Dr. Jennifer Trujillo, to uh, share an overview of the chapter achievement. And then we'll, um, it is with great privilege that um, we will introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Tina Brock. And last but certainly not least, we're going to have uh, Dr. Sarah Weathergreen to uh, help us conduct the Rokai induction ritual and install our um, new officer for the upcoming year. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming uh, Dean Altieri as he says a few words. Thank you, Vin. And let me add my welcome to uh, everyone for joining us for this uh, annual induction ceremony and special welcome to our guests and uh, also to our faculty members who joined us today. So today is uh, an exceptionally special occasion because we have a variety of things to celebrate. First one being the centennial anniversary of Rokai. And this is something we can stay here in Colorado because we're celebrating the centennial in the centennial state of the United States. So I thought that was a brilliant thing I thought of just as I was writing this. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, I'm, 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 there's a connection here, yeah. Um, it's also our first in-person induction ceremony in three years now, the last one was in 2019. So it's a great day to see everyone here uh, and participating. Uh, and of course, celebrating the most uh, uh, improved chapter award that you received this year. So congratulations to everyone in Rokai. And special thanks to your leadership team and to your advisors, Drs. Trujillo and Whittaker. All of that's great, but most importantly, what's, why are we here? We're gonna congratulate and celebrate uh, the new inductees into our chapter of Rokai. You've all worked very hard. You're in the top 20% of your class, put you in the top 20% of everybody in pharmacy school in the United States. That's pretty high level work. Uh, and you know, your membership in Rokai, as I think you probably know, commits you to uh, providing intellectual leadership, and critical inquiry to advance the future of pharmacy. Uh, both of these attributes will serve you well throughout your careers, whatever that may be and whatever decisions you make about your career going forward. But just keep being inquisitive, keep learning new things. Certainly you're gonna do it about what your job is about, but you need to, I think also look outside of that into other areas and uh, learn from and consider, consider how leadership 
in other fields can teach you how to be better leaders in pharmacy and add more to that intellectual leadership uh, for the future of pharmacy. So the best speech is a short one. We are ready to move on with the events of the day. So uh, congratulations again to all the members of ROCAI and to our new inductees. And Dr. Trujillo, I think you're, are you next up? Or is Vin is up? Oh, so, okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Um, thank you, Dean Alciari, for your kind words and making time to uh, join us tonight. Um, let's look back at our chapter acti activities and achievement over the past year. First, I would like to congratulate Dr. Jennifer Trujillo as she is reelected to continue uh, serving Rokai National Office as um, Regional Counselor of Region 8, which includes California, New Mexico, Hawaii, Arizona, Nevada, Alaska, and Colorado for another two years. And we are so proud of you. Congratulations. Please welcome Dr. Jenny Portrillo to highlight our chapter achievement over the past year. Thanks everyone for coming. I'm so excited to see all the students and family and alumni and faculty. Uh, it's just wonderful to be here in person. So that's great. I wanted to just mention a couple things about Rokai in general and also specifically about our chapter. So for those of you who don't know a lot about Rokai, it is the Professional Pharmacy's National Honor Society. With this vision as um, Dr. or Dean Altieri mentioned, this recognition of members as lifelong intellectual leaders in pharmacy, and to really, they want to instill this desire for the pursuit of critical inquiry. And so that's what ROCHI is about. And today we're inducting the students into our chapter because of their achievement as just the academic grade point average that places them in the top tier of their class. And I think considering the rigor and the challenge of our PharmD program, it is very obvious that these students have just achieved really great academic su success. And for that, I just wanna congratulate all of you. Congratulations. It's also just a really very special year for us because as mentioned, it's the 100th year anniversary of Brokai. This was exciting for us this year because we also got to go back in person. So there was a national Rokai celebration at the APHA meeting a couple months ago in the spring. And so that was really exciting to get to celebrate that. Um, the organization, the national organization, I think is as strong as ever. Um, they're really doing a lot at the national level. One of the things they're really committed to is reaching out and having better engagement with the alumni of the organization. So for anybody who is an alumni here today, thank you for being here. Our organization and our chapter really wants to reach out and engage with you even more. So thank you for being here if you are an alumni. And to the current students and the soon to be members of ROCHI, I just want you to know that when you get inducted today, you're a lifelong member which means you need to come back and engage with this um, chapter as much as you can, because we want that rich relationship between the alumni and the current students, and you will have so much to offer them. So please stay in touch as a lifelong member. Let me move ahead. All right, so a couple of things about looking closer at our chapter specifically, we have a lot to celebrate. So first of all, congratulations to all of our current members. At the National ROCHI meeting in the spring earlier this year, we were recognized as the most improved chapter, which is really amazing. So every chapter, there's over 100 chapters in the country. Every chapter submits a report every year. And the National Committee looks at all of those chapters to identify the top 30, and then the top 10, and then the winner. And um, there's a lot of chapters across the country doing really, really great work. 
So for those of you, the current members that were involved in submitting for this award, and for all of the great work that you did um, that got you this award, congratulations. I know you did a lot of great stuff this year. So good job. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to congratulate one of our faculty members, Dr. Robert Page. He was um, included in the National Alumni Honor Roll this year. He was, um, that was submitted by his original chapter, which was the Alpha Iota chapter at Medical University of South Carolina. So congratulations to Dr. Page as well for that recognition. And then I wanted to mention a few great activities that our chapter participated in in this past year. There were some really great philanthropy events included, um, including making over 1,500 handmade Halloween cards, making meal bags for Project Angel Heart. So Melissa Maffei really led the charge there. Thank you for your leadership. It was really great. We've also been working hard, again, at getting in touch with our alumni finding new ways to engage and learn from our alumni. We had a really nice event this year where we had some recent graduates come back and talk about their careers and their career paths, which was really, really meaningful. I hope we can continue that also. And then in addition, our students just do so much for our students at this campus. So they provide a lot of tutoring to the students um, across the whole FarmD program. They also um, have things like medication of the month, the research spotlight as ways of getting out um, important information to the students as a whole. And we're trying to connect. So we have a new Instagram. Um, so if you are on Instagram, please consider following us as another way for you to stay in touch. And then finally, of course, to make all of those awards and activities successful, we have amazing student members that are working hard every day in their classes but also committed to Rokai and super engaged. So the e-board, first of all, are the first people that I want to acknowledge. Vintai, Freddie Young, Joelle Teal, Jacob Dinkins, and Melissa Maffei. You guys have been awesome to work with. You've done so much this year. Thank you. Congratulations for a job well done. In addition to them, we've had a lot of members that have stepped up repeatedly and gone above and beyond in terms of their engagement, um, their tutoring effort, efforts and all of that. And so we've got Anna Bergkamp, Caitlin Hart, Casey Johnson, and Lucas Olivas, who were also just really going above and beyond to contribute to the success of this chapter. So thank you to the four of you who are members of the month at some point in the last year. Congratulations. And then finally, just announcing this tonight, hot off the press, our uh, member of the year that uh, just really did so much for us was Casey Johnson. So congratulations to Casey also. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Vin. Thank you so much. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Freddie. I'm the current chapter's vice president. And I just wanted to share a little bit um, about what our P4s are doing because it's very exciting. Graduation's upon us. So as we wrap up this academic year, we're excited to share our, the achievements of our P4 Rokai members as they near graduation. So we conducted a poll. We reached out and asked um, what they were doing after graduation. We heard back from 16 of our members. And so based on these results, 10 students will start PGY1 or postgraduate year one residency training um, in Colorado, Utah, Massachusetts, and New Mexico. So we want to congratulate all of them for their hard work. Uh, we have one member pursuing a postdoctorate fellowship. Uh, one pursuing a PhD here at the school is staying on. Um, and four members will be joining the workforce. So we just want to highlight the great things our members are doing, like now and after graduation, and I want to congratulate them on behalf of Rokai, um, all their achievements, and I want to wish them luck and continued success in all of their future endeavors. So congratulations to all of our P4s. Thank you, Dr. Trio, and then also thank you, Freddie. Um, 
It is now my great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Tina Brock. Professor Brock is Associate Dean at our school CU SCAC School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, where she leads the team implementing innovative, inclusive, accountable, and sustainable education and training. She is a leader and an innovator in pharmacy education across the globe, including Australia, UK, and UCSF and UNC in the US. What excites Dr. Brock? The future of healthcare is patient-centered, team-based, and sustainable. And the future of health profession education is interprofessional, technology-enhanced, and informed by climate health. Professor Brock believes that collaborations across scientific disciplines between institutions of higher learning with health system and with innovative industries have the potential to transform health in populations worldwide. But they take a lot of time, effort, and skill and science to work effectively. And the frustration rate is high, so she's keen to study strategies to making collaboration worth it. We feel extremely lucky that Dr. Brock accepted our invitation tonight. So please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Brock. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I was really, really honored to be asked. I am a member of RoCai, the Chi chapter, and I'll tell you a little bit about my history and um, what it means to me to be a RoCai member. But first, um, as Ben indicated, I actually recently moved back from Australia. I'm not Australian by birth. You can probably tell from my accent. But one of the things that I learned when I moved to Australia and learned about my new, new place is the about the traditional owners of the land and um, a, a, a practice that they do there is they always honor the traditional owners of the land in any formal ceremony. So I found out that here at CU and Shoots, we actually have this practice too. And I'd like to share that with you today. So the CU and Shoots campus is located on the unceded lands of the Arapaho people. Let us acknowledge the painful history of forced removal and ongoing systemic inequities. Let us respect steps, steps towards reconciliation. Let us recognize the lessons, including many public health lessons that indigenous communities continue to teach us. Today, there are more than 40,000 indigenous people from many tribes in the greater Denver area. Let us pay our respects to their leaders past, present and emerging. So I have lots of happy memories of being a ROCHI member. In fact, I still have my ROCHI certificate on the wall in my office and I have my little ROCHI pin. It's much smaller than your pin. So there's been some inflation of the ROCHI pin since my time. But I started, I asked my mom who lives back in Mississippi, I said, can you go through the scrapbook and just see if you can pull out my, the picture from my ROCHI induction? And this is the picture she sent me. That's me. Now. This is not my ROCHI induction, and I know that because this is my junior high honor society <laughs> induction. And I would like to point out that I'm wearing flowers in both my hair and on my dress. So it was a very special day. So I was like, mom, that's really sweet, but that's not my ROCHI. <laughs> Could you try again? She sent me this picture. This is also not ROCHI induction. And I know that because it is my graduation ceremony. And I know that because I'm wearing my graduation regalia. So sometime between the picture on the top and the picture on the bottom, I was inducted into Rokai and it was a very special day. Um, although I do remember, we actually had a formal dinner. And the reason why I remember the dinner is they took the opportunity to teach us how to approach a formal dinner. So they taught us like, the place setting, what the, each knife and fork was for. And I'll never forget, they taught me that my bread plate, B, is on this side, and my drink, D, is on this side. And to this day, I still sit down at a formal table and go, this is my bread plate, and this is my drink. So I learned a lot from being a Rokai member. Um, but today is about celebration. It's about you. I'm so excited 
to see so many families and friends here. It's really nice to be in person. And I just want to congratulate you, congratulate you, the members, as well as your family and friends. Um, a little saying that we have in Mississippi is, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know they didn't get there by themselves. And so you, your family and friends are a big part of this induction as well. So thank you so much for being here. And now I'm gonna talk about the darker side of Rokai. And this is, you know, I'm, I'm taking a risk here. I'm gonna to talk to you about regrets. And this is a book I've been reading recently by Dan Pink called The Power of Regret, but it's really using your regrets to drive change. And without being a big buzzkill, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some things I regret. Well, first of all, regret, it's an emotion, right? It's usually a negative emotion. It makes us feel uncomfortable. It's not the same as disappointment because regrets are related to actions that you take or that you don't take. Your regrets are really your fault. Like for example, an example, um, example of this I heard is, if you're a mom and you um, forget to put the, you know, your child's tooth, you know, the tooth's under the pillow and you forget to exchange that with the tooth fairy dollar, um, your kid is going to be disappointed the next morning, right? Their tooth's still going to be there. But, but you're going to regret it, right? You're the person that's going to regret it. And interestingly, the research shows that people with higher educational levels tend to have more regrets, which I thought was pretty interesting. I thought maybe it would be the other way around. So let's talk a little bit about that. These are the smartest people in the school. Dr. Trujillo has said, these are the highest academic achievers in the school. And you know what they're great at? Taking tests. <laughs> so we're gonna have a short little quiz and we're gonna see how they do. So here's the quiz. It's cut off a little bit, so I'll read it. Which of the following actions or inactions does Tina Brock, that's me, most regret? Select one only. Running for student council president in pharmacy school, not doing a residency after graduation, quitting her first hospital pharmacist job on the very first day, being inducted into Rokai. So this is my class in pharmacy school. And I did run for, for, for student council president my last year. And there had never been a, a, a female student council president in the history of Ole Miss School of Pharmacy. And I was pretty keen to go out and I was, I had a very progressive um, um, platform that I was uh, trying to convince people on and I was not elected. Um, a, a very nice uh, gentleman from my class was elected. He had a very traditional um, platform, reducing the amount of tests that we had. People tended to vote for that. I think mine was a little more, little more out there. Um, this is actually, this picture is my class. There used to be a tradition. I don't know if anybody else in the room is old enough to remember. There used to be a program that Eli Lilly, the drug company, every pharmacy school in the country, there were only about 80 at the time, would send their third year class to Indianapolis and we would do a tour of Eli Lilly. So this is my class at that time. And, you know, it was, it was a little humbling not to be elected. I was really putting myself out there. I'm a natural introvert. It may not seem that way now, but I had told myself, I'm, I really care about this and I'm gonna, you know, put myself out, didn't get elected, but the Dean heard my passionate speech and he asked me to be the student representative on the Dean search. That Dean was retiring and we were searching for a new Dean. And I got to see the background of academia which I had never thought about before and never thought I might be an academic one day. I need to get my water. Oh. Um, and so I don't regret putting myself out there because it was so great what happened after just because he heard me give that good speech and he thought I could be a student leader. So. So it's not choice A. Next up, not doing a residency after graduation. You've heard many, that is a very appealable, appealing career path for, for graduates. But I was kind of the one 
sitting in the front row going, I don't know if that's for me. Oh, thank you. Fresh. Doesn't even have a lipstick mark yet. Um, I, I was a little, I really wanted to learn a little bit more about research and get to spend some time in the pharmaceutical industry. So I chose to go into a master's track, a master's in pharmaceutical marketing. And through that experience, I actually did get to go to Germany. And my mom sent me this picture too. I was like, there were no pictures from my workplace in Germany. I wish I could have showed you that because it was a long time ago when everybody smoked in the office. And I was like, that would be really freaky, right? To show these people. Um, but uh, I went by myself. I had never been outside of the country before. I, it was right after reunification of East and West Germany. And for the youngsters in the class, there used to be two Germanys. <laughs> and it was, I, I every month had to go and re-up my work permit to stay. And it was a little bit nervous. And after nine months, um, they stopped giving foreign work, work permits for the type of work that I was doing but I could stay on three more months as a tourist and do interrailing. And it absolutely changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. So I think residencies are fantastic, but they're not for everybody. This was um, a different career path for me, but it got me where I want to go. And um, it really changed my life. Next up, quitting her hot first hospital job on the first day. Now to tell the story of how I quit my first pharmacist job would exceed the time that I have been allotted today, but I'm happy to tell any student at any time if they're curious. I truly quit, what, like I actually went to the room where they take your ID badge photo. This is pre-cell phone days. I'm sitting on a stool, they're about to take the picture. I see a phone, a physical phone on the wall and I said, can I use that phone? And the photographer was like, sure, sure. So I go over, I call the people that I'm going to be working for. And I said, I don't think this is going to work out. Now, again, there was a, a very good reason. This is a Mississippi. Everybody knows everybody. She laughed and said, I do understand. The position had changed since I had taken it. She said, my husband is the assistant director at another hospital across town. He's also looking for someone. Let me ring him and see if you can go and have an interview today. So I started my second hospital job the next day, but um, uh, that job had a schedule that was seven days on, seven days off, 10.30 in the morning to 8.30 at night. So no vacation time. You just got every other week. You work for seven days and off. And because of that, I got to work with the Mississippi Pharmacist Association because I had seven days off. My husband worked Monday through Friday and I got really involved with the professional organizations and that got me really involved with the University of North Carolina where I ultimately got to go. And it really inspired my work in global health, which was something that became really important to me. So I didn't know, I didn't even know that I wanted that, but by quitting that first hospital job, and getting a job that had a different schedule, I all of a sudden got exactly what was waiting for me. So it wasn't bad. So that only leaves, these are smart people. They realize if those three answers aren't right, the last one is right. So being inducted into Rokai. Now, do you really think I came to the Rokai induction ceremony to tell you that I re regret being in Rokai? Of course, I don't re regret being in Rokai. What I really regret is believing and acting as if my grades were the most important outcome. But pharmacy school is very busy. I had tests every week, just like you have tests every week. My identity really was, I was the smart girl in my town. I'm from a really small space. I, could, I felt like I couldn't let my GPA slip even a hundredth of a point or my future was bleak. I wouldn't even know who I was. But hang on a minute. Let's think about what do you think the number one reason applicants cite when they, for wanting to study pharmacy? Anyone? Helping people? Sound familiar? We wanted to help people, right? Helping people doesn't start after. It can start now. Using our smarts for greater good. I loved hearing all the service activities that Rokai does because I began to think now in retrospect, what could I have done 
The difference between perhaps a 92 and a 96 might have been giving me time to volunteer to tutor, tutor classmates, campaigning for LGBTQ plus rights, going to university seminars outside the field of pharmacy, partnering with my teachers to create more student-friendly learning materials. Yes, even back then, we thought our teachers could do a little bit better. Tutoring kids from disadvantaged schools so that they could come to pharmacy school one day and participating in more activities by, that were promoted from the professional organizations. There were times that I chose to study just a little bit more to keep just a little bit high. And now I can tell you, I regret it. I regret it. I'm glad I did well. And I, it's very difficult for people who are hardwired to achieve to do less but just a little bit less op might open up the world to you. So one of the things that this book about regrets taught me is if you are to ensure that your regrets are constructive, because it's really not that great to be, for me to be stewing about something that happened 25, 30 years ago, right? What they tell you to do is take your if only regrets and switch them to at least regrets. So if only I hadn't focused so much on my grades, I could have been con contributed even more to making tomorrow better. But at least I learned this valuable lesson about what's most important. And I have a chance to share that with you today. And at least when I asked my mom to find my Rokai picture, she also found this great picture of my best friends and I from pharmacy school. And it really made me happy. And I reached out and called each of them to find out what they were doing lately. So there's a, a nice, you know, constructive bit to regrets as well. But you know what? Enough of the gloom and doom. How fantastic is it? What could be better than a great celebration here in person together with the smartest kids in pharmacy school who are dedicated to a career in service. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you today. Congratulations to you, your family, your friends, your faculty. We're in it together. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Brock for sharing your wisdom and your inspiring story with us and making time to join us tonight as well. We will now begin our induction ritual with Dr. Sarah Weddergreen. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sarah Weddergreen. Well, thank you all. I have the distinct honor tonight of getting to announce the names of our new inductees. I am also a fellow Rokai advisor with Dr. Trujillo and I'm a Rokai member myself. As you come to the front, when I call your name to collect your pin and certificate, I have a tip for you. Unlike Dr. Brock's beautifully framed Rokai certificate, uh, as a student, I was very excited to be in Rokai, and so I put a bunch of pushpins in it on my bulletin board. <laughs> As I became a faculty and learned that everyone frames these sorts of things, I was full of regret. <laughs> so as you collect your certificate, remember, someday you might want this to be so nice, so maybe keep it nice and frame it right away as you celebrate this evening. Do not spill any of your exciting refreshments here tonight on them. So to our current members of Rokai, the persons before you have proved themselves worthy of membership in the Rokai Society. I present them at this time to be initiated. When I call your name, please come to the front to accept your certificate and pin. If you are an inductee who is joining us on Zoom this evening, we invite you at the time of your name being called to show your camera and say thank you so we can all see you on screen and celebrate together with you. We will now begin our induction and we'll see if I can figure out our clicking situation here. Okay, our first inductee, we will begin tonight with our P3 inductees, Natalie Mosbeck. Leah Sun. Mm -hmm. 
Marie Storer. I can see our Oh, wait, there. Oh, yeah, there we go. Huh. Oh, boy, now I got to click back here. And lastly, Brittany Schulstead. Thank you. Joining us via Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations to all of our P3 Rho Chi Alpha Theta inductees. We are all truly proud of your accomplishments and look forward to seeing you all succeed in your upcoming rotations. We will now continue by initiating our P2 members. Kylie Chavez. Che Cho. Kelly Clark. Ellie Degani. Uyen Din. Petra Earhart. Kelly Gable. Nate Grinke. Victoria Handy. Maxwell Herbert. Maya Crummins. Louisa Landolf. Allison Wynn. Berkeley Piker. Michelle Reyes. Catherine Salmeron. Araceli Sosa. Jen.
Julia, take it off. Angelica Tran. We Ryan Tran. Danielle Vu. And last but not least on Zoom, we have, or I don't think she can attend even via Zoom tonight, Jana Bezdek Taut. Congratulations to all of our P2 Rokai Alpha Theta initiates. Maybe we'll just <laughs> And I will say P2s, it's nice to finally meet you in person. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on Zoom together, so it's nice to meet you finally in person here. Thank you for being here tonight to celebrate. You all are almost halfway through your pharmacy school careers, which is crazy to think about. And we're so happy to celebrate each and every one of your accomplishments up to this point. We will now initiate students in the North American trained PharmD program and internationally trained PharmD program. Thank you. There she is. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Amber Russell. Rita Weiss. The Rokai Alpha Theta Officer Team will now continue with our official induction ritual. Thank you so much, Dr. Weddow Green. Candidates of Rokai, by your academic record and personal quality, you have merited a place among us. As, member, it will be in, as members, it will be interested in your ability and conscience to nurture the ideals and interests of our chapter and our national fellowship. Listen now to a resume of Rokai's history, where it reveals the intense feeling and high purpose of the individuals who bought into this honor society in pharmacy. There have been Greek letter fraternal societies in pharmacy long before the establishment of an honor society in pharmacy. For years, plans have existed for that special kind of fraternal group whose main purpose would be to stimulate scholarship and research and whose membership would reflect the intellectual and human qualities necessary to breathe life into, into society's aims. The efforts of many bore fruit on May 19, 19 and 22, when the first chapter of Rokai instituted at the University of Michigan was given national recognition. Sanctioned by the organization now called the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy, the society grew. Our own Alpha Ch Theta chapter was formed in 1948 to be organized and receive approval of all other member chapters. The high standards maintained by Rokai have resulted in the general recognition of membership as a distinction analogous to election to great honor societies and other fields of scholarship. It is into this tradition and respected fellowship that we invite you 
we have chosen with care, mindful of the responsibilities that will be yours. For soon in your hands will rest the welfare of this Alpha Theta chapter, which others have labored to establish and maintain. Rokai offers you an opportunity and stimulus for greater service. Our membership confers distinction, but keep this well in mind. No distinction, no honor, no privilege comes to anyone without added responsibility. Listen well to our mission and vision in order that you may better understand the high honor of membership and what is expected of a Rokai member. As the Academic Honor Society in Pharmacy, the Rokai Society encourages and recognizes excellence in intellectual achievement, stimulates critical inquiry to advance pharmacy, contributes to the development of intellectual leaders, promotes the highest ethical standards, and fosters collaboration. The Rokai Society seeks to advance pharmacy through sustained intellectual leadership. Your actions should reflect pharmacy at its best in the high standards symbolized by your Rokai insignia. The emblem of the society is the octagonal key bearing the Greek letters Rokai, combined to form that ancient and common symbol in pharmacy representing the use of medication in healthcare. The eight sides of the key have evolved to represent the elements that form the foundation of our profession. Chemistry, biology, physiology, pharmaceutics, pharmacology, the biomedical, social, administrative, administrative, and clinical sciences. Our colors are purple and white, the royal purple of the highest intellectual efforts and the white of truth and loyalty. Our purposes lie in the unswerving aim of our members to adhere to and promote the highest ideals of, in pharmacy, both scientific and cultural. Rokai inductees, please rise. Thank you. And now with the full knowledge of the purpose and aims of Rokai, are you willing to join the society, to support the society, and to work with the society to the best of your ability? If so, signify by saying, I am. I As am. As of the Rokai Society, I, we warmly welcome you into our fellowship. The Rokai Society is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. We as members are laying foundation for the next 100 years. Our society encourages us to stay involved as lifetime member and alumni of our chapter. You are now a Rokai lifetime member. We welcome you to the Rokai Society. Thank you, you now may be seated. We will conclude the ceremony with the installation of our new officer who will hold the office until May, 2023. As it comes to the end of my presidency, I would like to thank Dr. Jennifer Trujillo and Dr. Sarah Weathergreen for your unmatched commitment and dedication to our chapter. You have always been there for us, provided us with needed guidance and support. And I would like to also thank my eboard, my teammate, Freddie, Joel, Jacob, and Melissa. It has been a great pleasure working with and learning from you all. You are accountable, reliable, and flexible. <laughs> I am so proud to be a part of this team. Thank you so much. Now each current officer will announce their successor. When your name is called, please come on the stage. The following members have been elected by their peers to lead and uphold the fundamental pillars of Rokai. President Angelica Tran.
We have Vice President Berkeley Piker. Our new secretary is Catherine Salmeron. Our treasurer, Julia Tegetoff. And last but not least, our new historian, Kelly Gable. As newly elected officers of the Alpha Theta chapter of Thoreau Chi Pharmacy Honor Society for the forthcoming academic year, do you pledge to uphold the bylaws of the Rokai Society and to attempt to the best of your abilities, the assigned duties of the respective office to which you have been elected? If so, signify by saying I do. On behalf of the current e-board, I accept your affirmation and extend you my best regards in the coming year. <laughs> I'm running up here. These are the officers who will hold office until May of 2023. As an advisor of the Rokai Society, I accept each of your affirmations and extend to you my best regards in the coming year. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe it is appropriate to offer congratulations to all of our initiates as well as our newly elected officers. Officers, you can take your seat. Scott. That concludes our program tonight. Thank you everyone for coming out to celebrate our new Rokai Alpha Theta members. A special thanks to family and friends who were able to attend this special evening. As members of Rokai, we owe some of our success to having support system like you. Thank you to Dr. Brock and Dean Altieri for making time to speak at this occasion. And I also would like to thank Ms. Cecilia and Mr. Jerron for helping us plan this event. For everyone on Zoom, thank you again, and we hope you have a Fantastic rest of the evening and the weekend. Um, take care. Bye.